Today we are talking all about dark horses. We're going to be looking at each and every weight division in the UFC, and I'm going to pick one fighter who I think isn't getting highlighted enough as being a true threat to the title within the next one or two years. So we're starting off with flyweight. The dark horse of the flyweight division is Brandon Raw Dog Roy Val. This dude is an action fighter. His fights are insane. His main issue that's not getting him over the hump is he wants firefights. He just completely spazzes out when he fights, and he has all the talent in the world. And if he's able to hone that, I think he's going to be a real title contender he's had some setbacks he had like a shoulder injury against um, Brandon Moreno when they fought he lost to Pantoja after that but he has strung some wins together I think he's legit I think he can beat anyone on any night it's just he's got to he's got to work on his IQ a little bit but the dude's really talented and his fights are so damn fun in the Bantamweight division Marab Develishvili I know he's ranked number three um, but I still think he's a dark horse I don't think anyone's really taking him seriously um, he might have to have one more win to get a title fight, even though I think he probably deserves it at this point. I think that that's going to be a fun-ass fight no matter who the champion is. I know Aljamain Sterling's the champ right now, so I don't know if they will fight each other. But let's say Henry Cejudo comes in there, beats Aljamain Sterling. Marab versus Henry Cejudo would be a great matchup. The dude's wrestling is insane, and his cardio is next level. The dude is just always on yeah, this is a really good fighter. It's someone who I think could easily be champion within the next two years. In the featherweight division, this is another... It's kind of a cop-out, but it's not. Josh Emmett. I know he's fighting for the interim title, and so that gives him a 50-50 shot to fight for the title. But in a you know a weight class with Max Holloway and Yair Rodriguez and Brian Ortega and Arnold Allen and all of these guys, I think Josh Emmett's being overlooked. He's fighting Yair. I think most people are going to pick Yair to win that fight. I think with the power in the wrestling of Josh Emmett, I think it makes him a real threat for Yair Rodriguez and also Alexander Volkanovsky. I think it'd be an interesting matchup for the champ. I feel like Josh Emmett, in a way, is the Michael Chandler of this division, but with better fight IQ. So those are you know big shoes to fill, but I'm excited to see Josh Emmett fill them within the next year or two. I'm excited for that Yair versus Josh fight. I think that's going to be really great. In the lightweight division, the biggest dark horse and one of the biggest dark horses in MMA is Benil Dariush. This guy's just so well-rounded. He's so good. And he's really taking an honorable approach to his fight career. He's fighting anyone, anytime, anywhere. He wants to fight Dustin Poirier. I'm a big Poirier fan. I think that's a tough fight for Poirier. Out of everyone in this division, I see him having probably the best chance to beat Islam Makachev. Islam Makachev is a beast. It's going to be tough to beat him, but Benil has a very particular set of skills that I think gives Islam some problems. So if anyone's going to beat him, I think it's going to be Benil. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the welterweight division, you guys have to remember the name. Bilal Muhammad gets no love, and I've done a video about him, um, just talking about how he's like completely slept on, and you know everyone calls him pillow hands, and he goes out and gets a finish against Sean Brady. I know he didn't get knocked down, and it was a standing finish, but what a performance by you know Sean Brady was an undefeated fighter, incredibly talented, and Bilal Muhammad keeps the train rolling. He's on a huge win streak right now. It's either like 9 or 10. It might be double digits at this point, guys. He's really damn good. I know he doesn't say the right things on the mic to get people tuning into every one of his fights, but he knows how to win a fight. His IQ is next level, and his skills back it up. And now he's with Team Khabib, so it's it's a recipe for success. I'm excited to see him fight either you know Colby Covington, Kamara Usman, Leon Edwards again, or or Hamzat Shemaev in the next calendar year because I think Bilal's legit and I think people are sleeping on him. In the middleweight division, we have Nasser Dean Imavov. He's fighting this Saturday, assuming this video comes out in time. He's going to be fighting Sean Strickland. If he beats Sean Strickland, that gets him up to the seven spot most likely. Maybe even Leapfrog's Paulo Costa. Maybe even Leapfrog's Derek Brunson. He could be top five with a win over Sean Strickland. This guy is a Dagestani, right? But he strikes. 
Did you hear that correctly? Yeah, that's a recipe for disaster. This is an interesting division, and if he can, you know, strike against the grapplers in this division and then grapple against the strikers in this division, he's going to find a lot of success, and he's already got some really, really good wins under his belt. So I'm excited to see what's next for Imavov. Hopefully, well, not hopefully, maybe he'll get the, the win against Strickland, and from there, who knows? That's That's a big win. All right, light heavyweight division. It's a complete mess right now, guys. It is a complete mess. I think the dark horse of this division is Paul Craig. Paul Craig is kind of he's kind of slept on because he has a lot of losses on his on his career. He's always fighting those top fighters in the light heavyweight division, but I, I think with the way the division is right now, with there not being a clear-cut champion, he could quickly kind of jump the line and get there with a few wins. His submission game is next level. He's great in jiu-jitsu. I know he likes to strike, and he can get it done there, but he always has the jiu-jitsu to fall back on. And let's not forget, he has a win over Nikita Krylov, and he also has a win over Magomed Ankalaev. And I think Magomed Ankalaev is questionably the best fighter in that division. He has a win over him. I know it was a last-minute submission, but he knows how to beat these guys. And with a few wins strung together... We could see Paul Craig as champion. He's got the swagger. He's got the skills. He's got to put it together and string together a couple wins here. But that's my dark horse of the lightweight division. Light heavyweight division. Excuse me. Heavyweight. All of you are thinking one thing. You're thinking Tom Aspinall. Wrong. Well, not wrong. It's uh, Tom Aspinall as a dark horse. That's a good pick. I don't, I don't judge you for picking Tom Aspinall, but who I'm choosing, Sergey Pavlovich. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new knockout king, and his name is Sergey. Holy shit, this guy is good. Um, I saw a fight a few fights ago for him. I don't remember the name of the opponent, but his striking is just so crisp. His, he's got great boxing, and he fought Derek Lewis, knocked him out. Derek Lewis was known as the knockout king before that. Then he fought the fighter to knock out Derek Lewis, Taito Ivasa, the new knockout king, and he knocked him out too. Dude, Sergey Pavlovich is legit, and I want to see him fight a Cyril Gan or a Stipe Miocic or a Francis Ngannou. Maybe not a Stipe. I want Stipe. I want Stipe to be a healthy boy, okay? Not that I don't like these other guys, but firefights in the heavyweight division. I think Sergey shakes things up, makes it interesting. I would be curious to see him fight some of these upper echelon fighters because he looked fantastic against Tai Tuivasa. All right. Women's strawweight, I almost went Marina Rodriguez because I, I love her. And when she beat Amanda Hibas, I was like, holy shit, she's really good. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say Amanda Lemos, who beat Marina Rodriguez and knocked her out. And Lemos is a finisher. She's got some really, really good wins to put together. Um, and she's just really, really solid in this division. She's already number three behind Carla Esparza and Rose Namajunas. So when you think about that, Carla's probably not getting a rematch. Rose, it's questionable whether or not she gets a rematch. I think there's a really good chance we see Amanda Lemos fight Zhang Weili next. And I think Amanda Lemos puts up a fight. I think she could get it done. With that being said, Zhang Weili is really, really good. So we'll have to see about that. But Amanda Lemos is a problem for that strawweight division. Moving on to the flyweight division for the females, we have Erin Blanchfield. In her last fight against Molly McCann was a slaughter fest, dude. I don't think she got hit. I legitimately don't think she got hit once. And she showed off her striking. She showed off her grappling. And she was just dominant. And Molly McCann had a lot of hype, too. She had a lot of finishes going into this fight, you know. With Patty and everything, she had a lot of, you know, star powers, a lot of star potential. She was kind of creeping her way towards a title shot. And uh, Aaron Blanchfield said, hold my beer and just completely destroyed Molly McCann in a beautiful performance that surprised a lot of people. It was impressive. And I think if she is able to replicate that formula against some of these other flyweights, she's going to find a lot of success. Aaron Blanchfield's on fire right now. Looking forward to seeing her next fight. Now, in, in the women's bantamweight division, 
I give you Irene Aldana. She's had a few losses there, but she's bounced back really, really nicely and put together some spectacular performances. She's a finisher now, and she's ranked number four. Now she has the boogie woman in her division, Amanda Nunes, the, the female goat, one of the goats of MMA, a top five fighter. If you were to ask most people, you'd put her in the top five. Um, she is in a tough division, but she's looking really, really good. She's 34 years old, and she seems to keep improving. Old dogs learning new tricks, but that's still young enough to get it done. I'd be interested to see her in a fight against Amanda Nunes, especially, you know, you had Amanda Nunes fighting Juliana Pena. She lost her title to her. Maybe the champ isn't as hungry as she used to be, and maybe Irene Aldana can give her issues. She's a dark horse. So those are my dark horses of the UFC. What do you guys think? Who are your dark horses in these UFC divisions? Let me know in the comment section below. And, uh, yeah, check out my OnlyFans link. Some nice booty pics in, in the description. It says MMA t-shirts, but it's actually my OnlyFans. Don't let it fool you. So you should check that out. Yeah, I'm not lying. It's, it's, it's my OnlyFans. It's not t-shirts. I'm not trying to sell you t-shirts. So don't check that out. That'd be, that'd be ridiculous. That'd be silly. All right, guys. Stop being weird. Goodbye.